nice to have your company on the chat room, doing the, ch the chatting, doing the hard work. I mean, I just ask the questions. Any idiot can do that. Doing the hard work is the Dean of Sydney, Philip Jensen. Philip, welcome Not back. Not so. The art of research is getting the right question. Right. When I get to it, <laughs> when I get to the right question, let me know. Okay. If there's two words that have caused a furor in Christian circles over the last, I don't know how many decades, those two words would be spiritual gifts. We get tortured about this expression, spiritual gifts, don't we? And either you think they're very important and you think it means this, or you think they're not terribly important, or you think it means something else. And it divides us into camps, doesn't it? Yes, and it's like uranium too. That look, There's a lot of us who just put our head in their sand and say, I hope it all goes away somehow. So let's talk about them. Let, let's, where do we start? Do we start by talking about the fact that that we are, we are worshipping a triune God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit? Well, it's a good place to start because there's nothing particularly about the Spirit in relation to spiritual gifts. Right. Um, the same gift, say prophecy, is given in 1 Corinthians 12 by God the Father, in Ephesians 4 by Christ the risen Lord, and it may be in 1 Corinthians 12 by the Holy Spirit. So. Uh, to say, well, this gift, this is the work of the Holy Spirit, seems to me to be distorted. Even in the 1 Corinthians 12 passage, later in the same chapter, God, uh, and Paul when he uses the word God, usually means God the Father, apportions the gifts. So we have to be really careful with, I guess, with anything about the Trinity, that we don't fall into a kind of tritheism where there's the the Father is very separate from the Son, yes. very separate from the Spirit, and it's the Spirit we go to for this. Yes, but there's also, it's not just tritheism, and there is a truth that different members of the Trinity are involved in different things. So the Spirit did not die on the cross, and the Father did not die on the cross. The Son right. died on the cross. And the Father sent the Son, the Son didn't send the Father. Uh, and the Father and the Son sent the Spirit. So there is a, there are some differences different roles. in roles in what they are doing. Right. But to make the work of gifts the distinctive work of the Holy Spirit is not right about gifts and it's not right about the Spirit. Okay. Because all three persons of the Trinity are involved in the giving of the gifts and the work of the Spirit is not fundamentally about giving gifts. And let's, let's talk about the role of the Holy Spirit. What is it the Holy Spirit does in our lives and does okay. for Christians? Um, uh, the, the three or four point quick summary is he points us to Jesus he brings us into the family of God through Jesus so that we call God our Father he uh, 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 enables us pushes us to uh, put to death the deeds of the old body and so leads us on into holiness and so fills us with his fruit which is a holy life of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness and so he, he takes us to God through the gospel. Um, now, uh, there are other roles of the Holy Spirit, I suppose we need to say, but I think your question was about for the Christian. Yes. I mean, he has this great role of uh, inspiring the prophets and the apostles so with the truth I, of the word of God. When I pick up a book like this, I'm really picking up the Holy Spirit's book. Absolutely. The people who wrote it. Yes. Prophets inspired by, directed by... Yes. Prophets never of their own interpretation. Right. But they spoke the words of God and that was the work of the Holy Spirit. That's, see, the Son doesn't do that. The Spirit of the Son does that. Right. And that's why every word of this is God, is from yes. God, because it's, it's from the Holy Spirit. Yes. Right. And so you want to know what the Holy Spirit says? Read the Bible. Okay. So I actually saw, walking through a Christian bookshop one, you know, they've got all these different Bibles with brand labels on. There was one that was called a spirit-filled Bible. And I thought, I reckon they're all spirit-filled. Yeah, they're all spirit-filled, yes. That's not a special one, that one. Okay, so the, the Holy Spirit does that. I mean, in the life of the Christian, I, I take it I am a Christian at all because of the Holy Spirit. I, it wasn't that I just wasn't a Christian, I was dead yes. until the Holy Spirit came and did something. And brought me to new life. So the Holy Spirit regenerates us. We're baptised by the Spirit into the body of Christ. And without the Holy Spirit, M moving and motivating people to preach the gospel and opening my heart to understand the gospel, I would never be saved in the first place. But once I'm regenerated, I'm regenerated into the body of Christ and I'm regenerated into the family of God so that I now call Jesus my Lord and God my Father. And the Holy Spirit is a kind of seal, evidence, guarantee that I have been born again. And of the eternal life that lies ahead of me. Right. That's right. And, and so it's not... The, the work of the Holy Spirit is not being carried away. 
So the opening verses of 1 Corinthians 12 are interesting in this because again he wants you to be concerned for the spiritual and he says remember in the former days when you were pagans you were carried away to, to dumb idols however you were carried and so some people think it's spiritual if I've gone into some kind of euphoria or some kind of state of, of, of uh, uh, like a dervish. I've just lost consciousness or I'm no longer under my self-control. But the work of the Spirit, is the fruit of the Spirit, is to give us self-control. Right. So when people fall down on the ground, you know, uh, they're not being slain by the Holy Spirit. They might be slain by a spirit, but it's not the Holy Spirit because right. the Holy Spirit gives you self-control. It doesn't take your control away. Uh, it's the pagan spirits who led you away, who carried you off. But the Holy Spirit teaches you to call Jesus your Lord, God your Father, and to turn your back on sin. So the, the ability, for example, to, to consciously and deliberately fight the battle against the old nature, which yes. Paul talks about in Romans 7, that ability is given to me by the Holy Spirit. That's the yes. kind of control the Holy Spirit is giving yes. me. He enables me to put to death the deeds of the old nature. Right. The deeds that I couldn't in my own strength put to death. He enables me to do and whereabouts is the Holy Spirit directing our attention? I mean, Jesus calls us to focus on him. All yes. of those I am statements. Yes. I am the way, the truth, right. and the life, and all the rest of it. Who, who is the Holy Spirit wanting us to focus on? Always points us to Jesus and through Jesus to God the Father. Right. Uh, and so he is the one who... So he, he doesn't draw attention to himself. But when people talk about you know, the forgotten person of the Holy Spirit, he is never forgotten. But when you preach Christ and him crucified, he is at work. He's not forgotten. He stands behind enabling that to happen because he doesn't draw attention to himself. Uh, you must never divide the spirit from the word of God. You must never divide the spirit from the person of Jesus. Let's talk about spiritual gifts. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me read you from... Uh, 1 Corinthians 14 verse 1. Pursue love and earnestly desire the spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. Now when that passage of scripture talks about spiritual gifts, what is it actually telling us? Well, it's telling us that our translators have got a bit of a problem. Right. So what's the problem? Well, Tell me about the Greek. I can't quite work out what the problem is, but they get it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not that hard. That is, the word spiritual is an adjective and there is no noun in that verse. Likewise in chapter 12 verse 1, uh, again the word spiritual is there as an adjective and there is no noun. So if I, look, if I looked it up literally it would say, it would say uh, desire the spirituals. Yes, it's plural, so it's spirituals and that doesn't make good English. No. So therefore we put in a word. In order to make it work as an English yes. sentence. Now, if you think the passage is about gifts, you might put in the word gifts, which is what our translations nearly all do. But it's better, I believe, in translation to remain ambiguous where the scriptures are ambiguous because you program people's thinking when you put in a particular word. Right. And we've got a good English word. I love it. It's the word thing. So uh, you desire the spiritual, spiritual things. things. Or if you're a teenager, the spiritual stuff. Yeah, the spiritual stuff. Yeah. So <laughs> like. The sentence is not actually telling us about spiritual gifts. No. It's telling us just about spiritual stuff, spiritual yeah. things. Yes, that's right. So, and and but the spirituals are being put over against gifts in 1 Corinthians 12, 13, 14. Okay, you need to unpack that and explain well, that. Uh, the Corinthians are obviously uh, passionate about their gifts and are extraordinarily gifted. So back in chapter 1, we're told that they lack no, no gift. Um, but yet in chapter 3 Paul says I can't talk to you as spiritual because you are not spiritual the way you're fighting and quarreling you're still of the flesh so here's a church that's massively gifted but unspiritual so having gifts is not an evidence of spirituality no not at all and and all kinds of people can be gifted even non-christians can be gifted and it, whatever gift is given comes from God and so it's not the sign of spirituality but our translators keep putting it in. So there's a word gift, charisma, which occurs seven times in 1 Corinthians, but never with the adjective spiritual. See, this is a breakthrough. We, we're not hearing this. We, 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 
are making the assumption spiritual and gifts have to go together yes. the whole time. Well, they Un keep being put together in the passage. So if you look at 1 Corinthians 1, it says you lack no gift in the Greek. Yep. It's translated, you lack no spiritual gift. But it only says gift. But it only says gift. Right, I'm just looking at the front to see how I can and sue. <laughs> I'm on the board of reference for that one, so <laughs> please don't. <laughs> and then there is this word spiritual that occurs some 15 times in 1 Corinthians. But without the word gift. Without the word gift. Right. And we know that Paul is struggling with them to be spiritual. And their concern over gifts is misleading to them. Because although they're very gifted, they are unspiritual. And Paul is concerned that they be spiritual. Now, I don't want to drive such a huge wedge and to say, well, the Holy Spirit of God has nothing to do with gifts. But to combine them the way the translations, and not just that translation, they all do it. Combine them in the way that's combined, I think is fairly misleading. Because the passages are actually trying to say, desire spirituality, not desire spiritual gifts. And... And we have, in a lot of common thinking over the last few decades, lumped them together. Yes. We have taken gifts, certain gifts, as a sign of spirituality, yes. haven't we? that's right. Now, in chapter uh, 12, verse 7, it talks about the manifestation of the Spirit. But I think what it's saying in 12, 7 is not that each gift is a manifestation of the Spirit, but that you manifest the Spirit when you use your gifts for the common good. Right. And so the exhibition of the Spirit is not so much that you have gifts, but that each one uses their gift for the common good so is the manifestation of the Spirit. I'm being spiritually Christian when I care about others and I'm contributing to the life of the congregation. That's right. And that's, that, that expression is the spirituality, yes. not the gift. Not the gift. And that's why the excellent way of chapter 13 of love <laughs> is there. And so... As people read through 1 Corinthians 12 to 14, there is this chapter on love in the middle. Right? Now, it's the important chapter, not just because you know, love is such a wonderful thing and that's a chapter that was read at my wedding or something or other, which wasn't at mine, <laughs> um, but because that's what the whole of the three chapters are about. It's actually about being spiritual, being not spiritual. about gifts. Yes, because the fruit of the Spirit really matters. Okay. Whereas well, the gifts of the Spirit, well, they're the gifts of God and they do matter, but they're not the essence of, of the work of the Spirit. They're not the really important things compared to fruit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. That really matters. In fact, that's the stuff that goes on into eternity, whereas the gifts are just for the now. What is spirituality? When Paul is saying, talking to the, the Corinthians, I, you know, I want you to be spiritual. You need to seek the spirituals, the spiritual things. What's the goal? What is, spir what is Christian spirituality, evangelical spirituality? Well, that's a much harder thing to answer, I'm sorry. I mean, I can see that the word gifts isn't there, but what does this word uh, mean? Uh, later in the chapter, in uh, 1 Corinthians 14, I think it's verse 12, it talks of um, you, you, you desire the, and then there's no word there. So that translation puts manifestations, others put in gifts. Uh, you desire the things of the spirit. Right. You, uh, de you desire spirituals, you desire spirituality yes, or something. That's right. Now, what is, so I think he's picking on the Corinthians. The Corinthians want to be the people of the spirit, but they're not desiring love, faith, hope. Right. Because they're the things of the spirit. That central chapter, chapter 13. Yes. yes. And they're not desiring Jesus as Lord. Right. They're taking that for granted. Whereas that's the work of the Spirit. And they haven't been baptised into the one body who is Christ, where we love one another. For that's the work of the Spirit, that we will be united in the Spirit with a common concern for using whatever gifts God has given us for the common good. That is the work of the Spirit. There's that other expression that Paul uses uh, when he talks about the fruit of the Spirit. But that's the fruit of... Does that matter more than what gifts I've got? Oh, yes, because those things are of an eternal character. So he says in 1 Corinthians 13 how uh, gifts will pass, prophecy will pass, speaking in tongues will pass. These things, they, these pass because they're part of the passing world we are in. Whereas love, faith, hope, they abide. Uh, abide's a funny word. I don't know why we use it, but it means that they will continue. They remain. They go on and on and on. And the greatest of these is love. 
But people then want to know, well, when do these other things, prophecy and knowledge, pass away? You know, is it, uh, is it with the closing of the canon? Or is it with the return of the Lord Jesus Christ? Or is it when I grow up and become a mature person? And the answer is yes. <laughs> it's, it's just, we're in a world where things come and things go. We're in a world that's transitory of its very nature. And these are not of the eternal, these are of the transitory. So if, for example, I have the gift of a prophet, that doesn't necessarily mean I'll always have the gift of a prophet. It doesn't mean I'll be a prophet in heaven. It doesn't mean I'll need to prophesy in heaven. Prophecy is not needed in heaven, presumably. But even if I had the gift now, when I get old, I move into dementia, I mightn't be able to do that anymore. So it's just part of this passing world. But love, it's permanent. Faith, it's permanent. Hope, right. it's permanent. So when people say, using the sort of common cliche that's around now, you know, spiritual gifts are really important, my answer needs to be spirituality. Well, spiritual is really important. Being, yes. being a spiritual Christian is yes, important. Yes, being a spiritual church. But if you're a truly spiritual church, then you'd want to be a Christian church. Yes, yes. So when, when people use a, a dove as their logo, they haven't understood the Holy Spirit. It's an unspiritual logo. Because the Holy Spirit will direct us back to Jesus. the empty cross of Christ and, and what right. he's done and the That's empty right. tomb. And, and a better logo still, if you really want to have the Holy Spirit's logo, is to love one another. For by this will all men know that you are my disciple, not you have a fish sticker out the front, but that you are genuinely loving one another.